On September 29, 1957, there was a radiation accident at the Mayak Enterprise, which is often called the KYSHTYM accident. In terms of its scale of contamination, the disaster is second only to Fukushima 1 and the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The first radiation accident in the USSR took place on September 29, 1957, at the Mayak nuclear plant, which was built in the closed city of Chelyabinsk 40, now called Ozersk. According to studies, the radiation release on the day of the disaster was estimated at 20 million curies. See the accident was 50 million curies. Of course, the directions of the two nuclear facilities were different, as were the sources of their radiation. In Chernobyl the nuclear power reactor exploded, while at Mayak a tank of radioactive waste exploded. However, the consequences of such man-made disasters are so extensive that to this day it is difficult to assess the full extent of the damage, hundreds of thousands of people were exposed to radiation, tens of thousands of kilometers of land were scorched and abandoned. It is important to note that the emergency at the Mayak chemical combine occurred 29 years before Chernobyl and was kept secret until the 1990s. The radioactive trace in the eastern Urals region is still dangerous, and the combine to this day accepts radioactive waste, dumping it into the environment. The reasons for the tragedy can be listed from the very idea of building the plant. The main motivation for the government to build Mayak was the arms race, the Americans had already shown strength in Hiroshima and invested huge sums in the nuclear industry, the USSR did not want to lag behind and Stalin literally demanded nuclear weapons from scientists in order to have a decent response in the international arena. And the task was accomplished, the photo report to Stalin, signed by Kurchatov and Lavrentiberia. One can only imagine what the order as soon as possible does to several people, it was decided to build three nuclear cities near Chelyabinsk. This location was chosen for strategic reasons in case of an attack, Chelyabinsk was remote from the borders and the task of capturing was virtually impossible. Naturally, deadlines and tasks rarely coincided in practice, the builders were already putting up fortifications and walls, while the designers and planners were drawing and planning the project. It was found later that the facility did not have enough dosimeters and overalls, and almost all the equipment was taken from the chemical industry, there were no other options at the time. Alas, the atom needed special equipment, and radiation was mercilessly destroying instruments and technical mechanisms. Before the construction of atomic bombs began, it was necessary to create a chemical industry from scratch, raise a whole generation of scientists, and, of course, provide them with a place to work and experiment. The Mayak plant became such a place, and it was there that the best minds began to design the stuffing for nuclear weapons. The labor-intensive process was primarily aimed at accomplishing a state objective, while concern for the environment, health, and personal safety receded into the background. Not only plutonium and uranium were produced as a result of bomb-making, but also a lot of radioactive waste, which at first was simply dumped into the Teka River near the plant. After the deaths and illnesses of people in the adjacent regions became more frequent, it was decided to change the policy of the plant and pour only low-level radioactive waste into the river. The medium-activity wastes were dumped into Lake Karake, and the high-activity was stored in huge stainless steel jars. There was a lot of waste, it was accumulated in these very containers in concrete storages. The cans were warm because of the radioactive substances they contained. To avoid overheating and a possible explosion, they had to be cooled with water, so each was connected to a cooling system and a system for monitoring the condition of the insides. By the end of September 1957, one of the high-level waste storage tanks had a cooling system failure. To make matters worse, at the same time the cooling system failed, there was also a failure in the control system. Employees noticed that one of the cans was too hot, but they did not have time to inform their superiors, the can burst and all of its contents escaped. The capacity of just one can was 300 cubic meters, neither the lid, which weighed 560 tons, nor the two-meter layer of earth on top of the warehouse was able to hold back the explosion. There is another version of the catastrophe. In accordance with this version, the workers of the combine by mistake added the solution of plutonium oxalate to the evaporation tank with hot solution of plutonium nitrate. The chemical oxidation reaction released a huge amount of energy, which led to overheating and a subsequent explosion, the power of which was estimated at 70 to 100 tons of trinitrotoluene. 
almost 90% of the radiation eventually settled on the territory of the plant itself. When the tank ruptured, just over 20 million key of radioactive substances were released into the atmosphere, some of which formed an aerosol cloud that precipitated over an area 300 to 400 kilometers north of the accident site. On the international scale of nuclear tests, the accident at the Mayak plant was assigned a score of 6 out of a possible 7. The Chernobyl accident and the Fukushima explosion were rated at 7. The territory on which the radioactive fallout fell will later be called VURS Eastern Ural's radioactive trace, and the main contaminated part of 700 square kilometers will receive the status of the Eastern Ural State Reserve, which it is to this day. By the way, various experiments and studies are conducted on the territory of the reserve, scientists study the impact of radiation on animals and plants. The territory of the reserve has an official ban on visits, the level of radiation is still deadly for humans. It seems that big cities from Siberia to Tumen were lucky, radiation did not reach any of them, but 23 villages and 217 settlements still had to be evacuated. At the time, the government assumed all the expenses of the population during resettlement, but residents were asked to sign non-disclosure documents for 25 years in advance. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers and civilians were dispatched to respond to the accident and were forbidden to reveal where they had been. Nor were they told where they were going. Already in the first days, the death toll was in the hundreds. A total of 250,000 liquidators suffered in one way or another during the work at Mayak, and a monument was erected in memory of them in the town of KYSHTYM. In truth, the town of KYSHTYM has nothing to do with the tragedy, and the name KYSHTYM tragedy was propagated by the media as early as the 1990s, when the truth about the accident surfaced in the archives and the secrecy of the operating facilities still remained. The first mention of the KYSHTYM accident appeared in films by Elena Sikanyan that told the story of Soviet biologist and geneticist Nikolai Timofey it was only after a direct request from the director to Boris Yeltsin that it was shown on television. After the Chernobyl accident, it was allowed to talk about Mayak, the details of the 1957 explosion surfaced and it turned out that there was a column of smoke and dust above Mayak after the accident at the Combine. Just a few hours after the explosion it began to shimmer in different colors. People thought it was the Northern Lights, but the Chelyabinsk Worker newspaper published a note that didn't say a word about the accident. Instead of warnings of danger, the shimmering smoke was romanized as the very aurora borealis studied by such great minds as Lamanosov. For more than 11 hours a poisonous cloud covered the sky, and a news note summed up polar lights, can be observed in the South Urals region in the future. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.